after 90 years at Ayrton Park and says it's ready to take on the best in Europe. Plans for the new all-seater stadium were only unveiled this morning, but the club reckons it'll be built and ready for a grand opening ceremony in just 18 months. The announcement was made at the Teesside Development Corporation's headquarters. It's backing the multi-million pound scheme which will transform this land at Middlesbrough Dock into a sporting palace. It's a tremendous Christmas present, isn't it? Um, Middlesbrough Football Club with a brand new stadium right on the banks of the Tees, a real Teesside site. It's great news. This is the first announcement that we're making today, but we have another series of announcements that we'll be making in the new year, which are equally exciting um, and re really mind-boggling, some of them. The stadium will have four stands at first, which will hold 32,000 fans. But if the club's successful, then the capacity can increase by 10,000 by adding all the corner sections. There'll be 20 executive boxes and a host of other top facilities which will put the club and Teesside on the map. You were a member of the consortium that brought the club back from the dead in 86. It must be very pleasing for you to see such ambition these days. Sure, we've come a long way. 1986, the club uh, had huge debts. We, the shareholders, and, and the club had to pay off uh, over two and a half million pounds of debt. Uh, to then go on and to announce in a very, uh, within seven years, a 16 million pound development shows the ambition that we have for Middlesbrough Football Club. It's a great day for the football club, an important day for the football club, but also for Middlesbrough, the town of Middlesbrough, and the people of Teesside. We've achieved something today. Um, we've achieved a super stadium. What we now need to do is work to building a super team. Today's announcement has put great pressure on Sunderland to resolve their planning problems with Nissan for a new stadium next to the car plant at Washington. But the Football League's president says both schemes can work alongside each other. I certainly hope so. Um, from what I've heard this morning, I have no doubt that um, this scheme will go ahead. And uh, uh, clearly, uh, Sunderland have had problems. I very much hope that those problems can be resolved. The bottom line for the ambitious scheme is a successful football team. Without that, the borough don't stand a chance of being able to fill the new showpiece arena. Less than 7,000 fans were at Ayrson Park for the last game on Saturday, but they're confident they can turn things around. We've got to create a team uh, to fill the stadium. The stadium's not going to create a team on its own, you know. But uh, we've had difficult times, but I've, I'm, I've got great faith in, in the long-term future for this football club. The manager has been on a tight budget all season. The club says he'll still have cash to buy new players, but they're reluctant to say how they'll pay for the new stadium. The funding is complex, but it is there and it's in place. I have given assurances today that it will not affect impinge upon the team building plans. It, I've given that assurance to the, the manager, I'm giving it to the players, and I'm giving it to the supporters. Um, it will open in 1995. We have uh, been shown an awful lot of confidence today by the, the, the quality of the people that have sat here, and they would not have done that unless they were absolutely sure that Middlesbrough Football Club could deliver. Ayrson Park, 30 years ago, one of the top few grounds in the country and a venue for the 1966 World Cup. It's not clear what's to become of it now, but some at least will miss the roar around the old stadium. Well, yes, it's been here all the time, why not? It's been here all my life. All, all the lads go in there, they know what's, what's what and what's happening wherever. You're just going to lose a lot. But the end of an era for Ayrson Park is welcome news for some residents who've spent years putting up with noise, traffic and disturbance every other Saturday. You know, the racket and the, the carry-on and that, and the neighbours are complaining as well. You know, now and again when they get certain football teams on. Lovely. <laughs> is the relief? Yes. <laughs> it could be the start of an exodus. Tees Health confirmed today that it's planning to leave the General Hospital site next door in a few years' time. That would create a potentially lucrative town centre development zone. But in the short term, the trust is likely to find itself out of pocket. Nothing it's to for us. the Saturdays, for the football yeah. club, the park actually on the hospital grounds. So the to park, and to park there. So I would imagine it would affect the hospital more than anything yeah. else, financially anyway. Today, there was better news for the football club itself though. For their die-hard supporters, home is where the heart is. It's, uh, it's a good idea. Well, I've been coming here for 20 years. I mean, I'll, I'll go wherever they go. If the border moved out of the country, I'd still go and support them. <laughs> no, it's sad, really, because it's always been there, you know, ever since I was little. And I'll be there. Just cheer the lads on. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Now, police in North Yorkshire say they're anxious to trace a vital witness